I haven't done this for a while. Let's see if I still got it. Oh wow, I think we can try. Hey, how you doing? Doris here. Sorry for the weird intro. No more time traveling, I promise. So today we're gonna build a computer and if you wanna learn how to do it properly, just lay back and enjoy the show. When you build a computer, you will need some safety precautions because you are dealing with some sensitive electronics that can die simply by touching them. Of course, the chances to kill a component with aesthetic electricity are really low, but better to be safe than sorry. So all you need to do is to crown yourself. You can buy one of these anti-static wrist straps, but I only recommend it if you build pieces for a living and you deal with them every day. Otherwise, you can just simply touch a metallic radiator and you are good to go. To begin to build a PC, we will need to find a non-conductive surface, some screwdrivers and some twist ties. You can also use your motherboard box as a non-conductive surface. We start installing the CPU by lifting the retention arm, like so, then holding the CPU by the edges, we carefully place it into the socket. There is only one way to fit. You can find a small triangle on the corner of the CPU which will align with the blunted corner of the socket. You don't have to use any force. Place it in, give it a little wiggle, then you can lower the cover and fasten the retention arm again. The plastic cover should pop off and you can put that somewhere safe just in case you have to use it again. Now it's time to install the CPU cooler. We decided to go with the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4. This CPU cooler can be installed both on Intel and AMD motherboards. We're gonna need the Intel components now, which is the LGA1151. You can always check your manual to make sure what you are doing. Basically, we have to attach the backplate with four standoff screws and all these can be tightened by hand which means you are not supposed to over tighten it unless you want to break your motherboard. Next step is to install the two bridge component which will hold the cooler in place. Also, we need to apply some thermal paste and for that I still live by the rule as few as possible as much as necessary. Okay, let's place the cooler in and of course do not forget to remove the plastic cover. Now when you place the cooler on the CPU, do not try to lift it up again. You have to trust yourself and do it in one go. Otherwise you can leave some bubbles between the CPU and the cooler ending up with overheating issues. We need to insert the last component which we hold the cooler and fix it with two screws. Next step is to install the RAM sticks. Start by pulling back the tabs on the RAM slots. If you use two RAM sticks, then make sure you use the grey slots. Then position the RAM sticks so the notch on the RAM lines up with the notch on the socket and press firmly until the tab on the end snaps back into its place on its own. For storage, we choose the 500GB NVMe SSD from Western Digital, which will give plenty of speed for basically everything. Good thing is that you can always upgrade a PC like this if you need some more storage. Alright, we've done the hard part already. Let's put the coolers back on the CPU cooler and plug them in. There is also an included adapter for the CPU cooler, which we will need to use. Let's move on to the next step. Preparing our case. Every case is different, but all of them serves one thing, which is to keep your components safe. We choose the Cooler Master Master Box Lite 5 for this build. We need to start by removing the side panels and placing them somewhere safe. Now, this step is optional, but we decided we need some more lights in this case, so we swap the factory fitted coolers with some Cooler Master ones.
Before you place your motherboard into the case, you will have to install the IO plate and the six standoff screws, which will go here, 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 and here. When you place the motherboard in, make sure you not slide it around. There are sensitive parts on the back side of the motherboard too. You can hold it by the CPU cooler and you will know it if it's in its place when you see the nuts through the holes of your motherboard. Now we can screw it in, try to go crossover and do not tighten it too much. The next component is going to be the power supply. We choose the Foley modular EVGA 550G2. The reason to choose the modular ones is because we can use the cables that we only need or want and this way it's really beneficial for the cable management as well. We have to remove the backplate from the case and attach it to the PSU with four screws. Then we plug it in the cables and we can place it into the case. We already start to think about cable management so we can save some work later. There is one power cable for the CPU which can be challenging sometimes. Even myself I had to remove the case cooler to get some space for my hands to plug it in. Next one is the motherboard one. By the way there is only one way to fit in. And last but not least is the VGA power cable which we will use later. Getting closer and closer. Now we can plug the rest of the cables in such as case coolers, USB 3, audio, power buttons and LEDs. And finally we can install our GPU. First we need to remove the PCI slot covers and again all we have to do is to pull back the tab and then push the video card in firmly until the tab snaps back to its place. And then we can put the case screws back in. After that we can plug in the 8 pin power connector that I mentioned earlier. As you can see this case is really good for cable management. Well, especially if you use as many cables as we did here. Anyway, let's see if it turns on. And success! Now it's just a matter of time until we install an operating system and all the drivers. Then we can appreciate all the hard work that we had with this glorious PC. Alright, let me know in the comment section down below if you have any questions regarding PC building. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you are a fan. Thank you guys so much for joining me and I will see you in the next one.